All right, so now we're going to create the material. Um, and just to refresh where we came from, I'll cancel out of this. We have a roof, a glazed roofing panel. And I've tabbed in to select that panel. And I've gone to Edit Type. And I've updated some of the settings. Right, or I, I duplicated it and named it Mesh Panel. One, clicked OK, updated some of the settings. So made that zero, the offset, made that half inch. And then I went to the glass here under material and left clicked on the right hand side of that box <coughs> to bring up my material browser. And now I'm going to make a new material down here. So I'm going to create new material and it gives me a default new material. And I'm going to rename that. <coughs> I'm going to name it mesh material. 01 and I'm just going to check use render appearance for shading and then I'm going to go to the appearance tab which controls the rendering options and also gives us some channels or mapping options that we can use one of which is cutouts what a cutout map will do is it will take anything that's black and make it transparent anything that's white make it solid and anything in between will have transparency so I'm going to click cutouts right here and check it and it's going to open up my dialog box and I'm going to go to the materials for Revit um, under textures here and that location is right there so that's where the Revit material textures are there are three um, different folders one two and three there are different resolutions of the same map so I'm just going to go to two mats and I'm going to come here and go to my thumbnails <clears throat> and what I'm looking for is something to run a test with so I just want something that's black and white so I'm going to use this chain link fence to start with so anything that's black is going to be completely transparent anything that's white is going to be solid so we have two a ping and a bump map ping so once a cutout map so you can see this one's a little bit more contrasty than that one so the white and the black this one actually has a picture of a chain link fence so I'm going to pick this guy and I'm going to click open and you're going to see up in my box and let's see if I change this to white if maybe it'll be more apparent yeah you can see that it starts to cut that piece up and so what it's doing is it's stretching this image across that material and cutting out the black. So if I left click on this image, it will bring up a little texture editor and it's making that one foot by one foot, right? So that's about six inches there, right? And then let's say a little over three inches there, 3.33 inches. And that seems about right for us right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click done here. Um, if you wanted to, you could come down and change the size and all that kind of stuff of this. Um, once we're done with that, you can click OK. And actually, I think I'll change the color of it from white to something, whoops, from white to something a little bit darker. So I'll t pick a dark red. Click OK. And now that has been applied to our mesh panel one. And if I click OK, you don't see anything right here because you need to be in realistic to see that. So now you can see that is on the the materials been applied to that panel. And if I go to level one and I just draw a regular wall here, so just draw a wall right there and go back to my 3D view you'll be able to see through that wall that into the uh, wall above or below right so you can now see through that now you have to be in realistic for that to to work so if you're in a hidden line it's going to go back to solid so um, it will it will also render um, like that when you hit the render button and it will cast shadows um, and do all that stuff all right so when we come back what we'll do is, um, and you could apply this material to a ceiling if you just needed a grid. The thing that's nice about this is that if I pick this and go to edit type and I just, let's just add 
some mullions. So I'll just add some one inch square mullions here and a division. You can actually make a grid really quickly with this. So if I just do one inch squares down here and then I'll set my layout grid to fixed number and fixed number and click OK. And now I have a ceiling grid. And in the next <coughs> um, next installment, we'll make one that has a different, um, we'll make a perforated panel and then maybe just a rectangular grid. Okay.